Alright, it's time to start replacing components. I place a screw here so it's not resting on the magic eye tube as we flip it around. All these yellow wax capacitors will be replaced, as well as the electrolytic capacitor that you see here. So I think we'll start with the large one. So as you can see, there's not that much space here. So one option is to refit this capacitor with modern ones. Let's start by removing the old one. Mm, I'm replacing this resistor too. It's a little bit too off. It's supposed to be 15 kilo ohms. So this is an unbroken wire that is stripped in the middle and connected to the capacitor. That's an interesting way of doing it. As you can see, this is a 3-in-1 capacitor with the values 16 microfarad, 24 microfarad and 32 microfarad. But it's not obvious to me how to identify these three terminals. You can see here that there's no dot on 16 microfarad, one dot on 24 and two dots on 32. So maybe there were some markings here that has gotten lost with time. Okay, so I did notice that there is a difference in length on these terminals, so maybe the marking is on the terminal itself. Let's remove the solder and see if we can find it. So now that the terminals are cleaned up a bit, we can see that the markings are actually holes on the terminals. And that's a good design. Now any kind of color marking could easily disappear in time for one reason or another, but it would take a lot for these holes to disappear. Alright, let's get it. It's nice that the terminal clips could be removed like that. I think we'll reuse them. It's obviously not completely dried out. There's still some electrolytic fluid here. Wow, it smells really bad. It kind of looks like cheese in here and it kind of smells like cheese too. Here we can see what the terminal is attached to. Here we go. It really does smell like cheese, but you know, the Danes are known to make good smelly cheeses, so not that surprising perhaps. Here you can see obvious signs of how it was wound. So this is the piece of foil that attaches to the casing. This part where the terminal attaches is probably Bakelite, at least it smells like it. Okay, so the plan now is to clean this out and put the new electrolytic capacitors inside it. 
Now, I'm not sure how to get the rest of it out, but it is wax, so it should be possible to melt it. Let's try that. Ah, it seems to be working. That actually turned out way better than I expected. Alright, now that it's cleaned out, it's time to refit it. So here are the three capacitors we're going to use. I'm going to start by strapping them together. So negative terminals should be soldered to the casing, and the other one should be connected to the terminals. That way we don't have to relabel these. The capacitor values of the new capacitors deviate a bit, but it is within 20% tolerance, so I think it's fine. So apparently aluminum is very hard to solder. It seems that it oxidizes very fast, which prevents the solder from sticking to it. So instead I've drilled this hole, so I'm going to solder the capacitor to this nut instead, and then fasten it with a screw. Make sure it still works. It does. The plan is to seal the bottom with hot glue, but you have to remember not to cover the vents, which I totally did not forget the first time. I want to make sure that the capacitors are arranged the way I think they are. Smallest capacitor, the middle capacitor, and the large capacitor. Okay, now it's time to attach the terminals. Now the terminals might move around a bit when soldered, because it will melt the hot glue. That's not very good, but we will have to live with that. There, it looks pretty good. Now there is one more thing we need to do, we need to have a pressure vent on this casing too. The vents on the capacitors are used to release the pressure in case of failure. Now if they don't have any way to release the pressure, they might explode, which can be dangerous. Now as you can see this did not have a pressure release vent to begin with on the top. Instead it had this Bakelite disc that would detach in case of overpressure. But the modern electrolytic capacitors we placed inside here has the vent on the top side, so we need to drill a hole here. There we go, that's it. Now before you start replacing components, make sure to document it properly. It's quite a shame that these new capacitors are not shielded in the same way that the old one seems to be. That could mean that we will not be able to restore this to its complete original condition with these capacitors. So what will happen is that the new capacitors will be more sensitive to interference than the old ones were. But we'll have to give it a shot.
private Residenz, Sie können hier nicht campen. Nein, das Jedermannrecht gilt nicht bei Privatwohnen. Sie müssen sich einen anderen Platz suchen. Okay. Thank you.